I'm Radna Miorea. Um, I shaved my head recently after a very long relationship. Uh, eight years of bullshit. Uh, just, I was so disappointed with myself for holding on for so long. You know when you dedicate your life to someone for that long, you expect the other person to grow with you? Didn't work for me. Um, I thought at first it was just that we had different tastes, but in the end it turned out to be everything else too. Like I was depressed, I lost weight, I was embarrassed around my friends, and it was starting to affect my hair too. I mean, my hair lost volume, it was thin and droopy, and my friends would like look at my hair and go, oh, honey. So I tried everything that I could to fix us, you know? I changed my diet, I... Um, I took vitamins. I put us both through scalp therapy. Very expensive, okay? None of it worked. None of it worked. I couldn't take it anywhere, you know? I just had to accept that it refused to grow. So, I let it go. <laughs> Thank you, yeah. <laughs> um, I've been in SF for so long that I have been lots of different iterations of myself. I used to go to mime school. Yeah, I went to mime school. Oh, you don't believe me. Um, hang on. Uh, see that? That's me, 23 years old, doing pivots for a living. Pivots. Six hours a day, five days a week for a year. That was my life. Yeah. Don't regret it. I, would, I could do a whole set on pivots, but I won't bore you to death. Um, mime school was hard, though, mostly because I couldn't actually fuck any mimes. Not for lack of trying. I tried so hard. You know, I wanted to fuck a bunch of the mimes in my classroom, but they were always so quiet, you know? Probably wouldn't have been worth it anyway. I mean, mime sex? So weird. I mean, you don't know what's supposed to go where. There's no safe words, and instead of holes, there's stripes. I mean, so confusing. I don't think so. But I haven't always been into mimes. Um, my first blowjob was on my goth Mexican tennis instructor. Picture that for a minute. Um, yeah, he was 20 and I was 16, and we uh, used to go to the movies and make out. And he had two tongue rings in his mouth, like one behind and one in front. So making out with him sounded like eating Pop Rocks, but with a higher risk of teeth injury, super hot. And I never thought that it would go beyond that really, but one day my mom wasn't home, so I brought him over and he uh, came into the TV room with me, I asked him what he wanted to watch, and um, he just slumped against the wall and slid down. And I asked him, what are you doing? And he let out this really long emo sigh and said, do you want to blow me? And I was like, okay, I guess. I, mean, I know the feminists now are thinking like, what a weasel, but at least he asked, you know? Um, and I hadn't even watched porn at that point, so he had to, you know, instruct me. But I was so used to him teaching me that it was really, really a breeze. It was like all of my other lessons, you know, uh, getting handsy with the balls, stop and start, stop and start, trial and error, trial and error, sweat, 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 water break, him looking down my shirt, and of course, things getting thrown and uh, shot at me at uh, crazy speeds almost at my face. It was just like tennis, really. Um, but I'm glad that I had guidance on my first go. You know, how many of us get that chance? So that day, my tennis instructor taught me all about love. That's a tennis joke. If you didn't play tennis, you don't even know what I'm talking about. Um, yeah, I'm always late. Um, I feel like it's become a problem. I'm late to everything. I late, I'm late to like auditions. I'm late to sh work shifts. Um, I could be catching the last train to Busan during the zombie apocalypse and I would be late for that, of course. But I'm 34, I need to get my life together, you know? What if I meet the perfect guy on Hinge, like the love of my life? And he has this amazing adventure planned for me, like a, an amazing, like beautiful cruise across the bay on a ferry, you know? and we have to catch the ferry at 
I'd be late. <laughs> I'd be like texting him like, gonna be 15 minutes late, so sorry. And he'd be like, what time are you getting here? How far are you? The ferry leaves at 5.30. And I'd be like, I'm totally getting in the car right now. I'll be there soon as I'm putting on my mascara. And 12 minutes later, I'd be like, oh my God, so much traffic as I'm getting in the car. Uh, should we reschedule? Maybe we should catch a later ferry. And he's like, no, no, this is the last ferry of the day. Please get here. And I'd be like, okay, I'm sorry. I'm just going to actually get out of the car and walk because I think that would be way faster. And he'd be like, no, stay in the car. And I'd be like, I am so sorry that I fucked this up for us. If it makes you feel any better, I got it all dolled up. So hopefully this will be worth it. And he'd be like, bitch, I don't care what you look like. I just wanted to rape and kill you and drop your body in the bay. And I'd be like, oh my God, okay, stay right there. I'll be there in two minutes and in 26 minutes I'd get there and the police would be arresting him and I would be a national hero. So actually, yeah, being late is probably my best quality and let that be a lesson to you. Being late can save your life. Um, so I'm not actually looking for a partnership right now. Don't get any ideas. Um, I hate people. Uh, I do love animals though. Um, I love animals so much that my only roommate is a cat. I think as a female, it's very important to keep a backup pussy at all times. Just in case one pussy is mad at you, you can use the other one for comfort, you know? Nothing beats petting a pussy, am I right? Okay, that's been my set. Thank you, I'm Edna Maria. Greetings and salutations. My name is Lev. I do a comic and animation series called Tales of Mere Existence. I'm going to be showing you um, two episodes of this tonight. The first one is called Everything is My Fault, and the second one, Ex-Girlfriend in the Supermarket. Here they are. Hope you enjoy. I don't know why I always get this weird feeling that everything that goes wrong is all my fault. For instance, if I'm with a girl and I choose a restaurant that she doesn't like very much, it's all my fault because I chose a bad place and let her down. But if she chose a restaurant that wasn't any good, it's still all my fault because I didn't suggest that we went someplace else. At the same time, if I chose a restaurant and it's really good, I still feel bad and it's still kind of all my fault because I didn't let her decide where we went. And if she chooses the restaurant and it's really good, it's still all my fault because I have bad taste and she has to pick everything thing because I can't be trusted to pick anything good. This feeling goes for other stuff as well. Like if I accidentally make fun of somebody, that's totally all my fault because I wasn't thinking and I was being brash and careless. But at the same time, if they deliberately make fun of me, that's also all my fault because I'm too sensitive and wimpy and I shouldn't let it get to me. If someone is being irritating on the bus, I get mad at first, but then feel like it's all my fault I got annoyed because I should be more calm and understanding. Even when my car got broken into, I felt like it was all my fault that I had not parked it under a street lamp for the night. The asshole who broke into it was blameless because he was just doing what came naturally to him. It's certainly all my fault that I tend to forget people's names about 30 seconds after they told them to me. This is usually because I'm preoccupied with trying to think of something witty to say, and this also is all my fault. I say to myself over and over again, don't worry, other people's happiness is not your responsibility. But if a person I'm hanging out with appears bored, I all of a sudden feel the need to be as entertaining as possible because their boredom is of course all my fault. I certainly can't really dispute that it's all my fault that I'm really, really impatient. I know that it's all my fault that I get jealous and envious. I admit that it's all my fault that I don't have a lot of self-control, but what are you going to do? There's a part of me that would like to think that it isn't my fault that I'm prone to insane mood swings due to some sort of chemical imbalance, but there is a much larger part that is worried that I'd use acknowledgement of a chemical imbalance as an excuse to get doped up on antidepressants and never really do anything. So I've decided to conclude that it's all my fault that I have insane mood swings. If I do the absolute best I can, it's all my fault that it still isn't good enough. It's all my fault that I'm always tired because I lie awake thinking about getting chopped into ribbons by Ginsu knives. It's all my fault that I find it extraordinarily difficult to get close to people. I can't currently think of anything major I have done to contribute to the general demise of humanity, the destruction of the environment, and corporate overlords ruling the earth, but I'm terribly, terribly sorry about that because I'm pretty sure that must be all my fault too. Journal entry, August 31st. I was at the grocery store today in the wine aisle. 
I think I was trying to make a sophisticated decision in choosing a wine, but soon had to accept that I don't actually know the difference between one wine or the other. I chose the cheapest one that looked the most French because I figured that would be better for some reason. When I got that, I was looking over my list to see what else I needed to get, and I got a weird jolt of recognition. My ex-girlfriend was there in the store, looking at the cheese display. I have long wondered how I would feel if I saw her again, if I would be happy or upset. I think I tried to convince myself that it wouldn't bother me at all, but it was hard not to notice that I was doing my best to stay out of her line of sight. In the same way your life is supposed to flash in front of your eyes as you drive off a cliff, I noticed our whole relationship was flashing through my head. The good stuff, the sweet stuff, the food, the arguments, the drinks, the drunken arguments, the silent treatments, the sulking in the bathroom at 2 a.m. after she went to sleep and so on. When I settled down a bit, I thought, well, that's all water under the bridge. I should go say hello to her. She's a big part of my past. Civilized people should be able to do this. And then instinctively, I took the SpaghettiOs and hot dogs out of my shopping basket because she always hated it when I got those. Then I thought, wait a second, what am I doing? What do I care if she approves of the food I'm getting? That's none of her business anymore. But then I thought, at the same time, I wouldn't want to go over to her like, see, see, since you've been gone, I eat all the junk food I want. Because really, who knows where that could lead? It could turn into one of those conversations like, Everything's been going really well for me lately. I've been very happy without you. I've been much happier without you than you've been without me. I got promoted at work, I make a lot more money, and my new boyfriend is a surgeon. I feel freer now than I ever have in my life. He has a big house, a BMW, and an 11 and a half inch penis. And so on and so forth. I decided that I should just get out of there. But as I was walking over to the checkout, I thought, I don't know for sure that we'd get into an argument. What if she needed to ride home? What if she was having a bad day and I could cheer her up a little? I realized that I still had the instinct to be protective and want to help her, even though I remember having only moderate success in doing so. I looked back over at the cheese display. Her basket was still there, but she wasn't. She must have gone to another part of the store. I went over and had a look at what she was getting. Rice, chicken, tomatoes, butter, onion... And then I thought, you know something, I'll bet she's making chicken biryani like she used to for us, but it looks like she forgot the garlic paste again. She almost always forgot ingredients when she cooked, and they usually led her to make some really weird spice substitutions. I went and got her a jar of garlic paste and started looking around the store, but I couldn't find her. The more I looked, though, the more I started getting this weird feeling in my stomach, and I started to wonder if I could not find her, because deep down, I wasn't really sure if I wanted to. Anyway, I went back over to her basket, dropped the garlic paste in there, and I left. Thank you for attending this evening's edition of Club Closed. If you wish to find me and my work again, here is all of my Webernet info. I believe that's it. Enjoy the rest of the show, and I hope to see you next time. Hey guys, welcome to Club Closed. My name is Magical Katrina and I'm very excited. I'm going to do some magic with you. And this is my friend Clay Mazing. Hi. And Clay, you're a circus performer, right? And you run a nonprofit called Emergency Circus. Oh, yeah. But pl- I can, we can plug it right now? Yeah, yeah emergencycircus.com. <laughs> if uh, you're in an emergency and you need a circus. But the, the important thing is that you're not a magician and right. we haven't planned anything. Um, I don't know what's going on. But, you know, (laughs) I can't come out and touch you guys. So he's going to be the eyes and the ears of the audience for you all tonight. Yes. Okay. So, I have here a $5 bill. Not super magical, except for the fact that you can buy sandwiches with it. Mm. But... Uh, also, I'm going to see if we can do something. I'm going to take this $5 bill, and on the count of three, I'm going to see if I can make it float. But first, give a little blow. Okay. You guys, too? Nice. <laughs> okay. One, two, three. Ooh. Pretty cool. Do you guys want to try it home? Let me see. No? Oh, okay. See if you can do it. Oh, that was cool. (laughs) Okay, magical sounds do help, though. So, oh, hey, we need that. Oh, (laughs) that's not mine. (laughs) You're a good assistant, though. I'm a clown. Always use clowns as your assistants. (laughs)
Um, okay, I'm gonna take this $5 bill and this pen, and I'm gonna do something else that's pretty cool. I'm just gonna show off a little bit. I'm gonna do one, two, three, stab! Ooh. Ta-da! Just wasted $5. Yeah, you're right. Like, it's not <laughs> a great thing to do in this economy. Um, okay, so you guys don't seem that impressed. You don't seem that impressed. Um, pe you know, I just destroyed something. That sounds super cool. But if it were actually magic, it would look something like this. Thank you so much, Claire. Well, that was fun. Now let's do a magic trick with cards. Cause you know, I'm a magician. It's kind of an obligation whenever you do a virtual show, you have to have at least one card trick in it. Um, so I have here a bunch of different cards. I'm showing them all to you guys. So you know, they're all different. They're not all the same card. Okay. And here I'll give them to you to examine. Maybe do a shuffle or something. Hey, place your bets here. Check it out. Shuffling. That's pretty good, right? I think the folks at home are impressed. Ooh, Hi, are you the magician you. or am I the magician? I'm just trying to I make it challenging. Okay, so we're gonna do a little bit of a magic here. Shuffle the cards. Uh, I want you to uh, pick a card, any card at all. Any card that jumps out at you or that you feel a connection with. I'm gonna go all the way in here okay. somewhere. Okay. Oof. Try and okay. Okay. Ruin you. Show the audience. Show <laughs> the audience. Yeah, you're real independent. Okay. Make sure to see it on there. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And great. Now uh, just put the card back. Put the card back anywhere you like. Okay. And I'm just gonna show everyone the card is in the deck, in the very center of the deck. We're gonna shove your card down, down, so it's lost. And now uh, I'm going to see if I can find your card with magic. But first, did you actually give your card a name? No. Oh, okay. Uh, it's very important. Not the name that it was given originally, but like it needs it needs some sort of name so we can get it from out of the deck and bring it up and you can call it and it, you know, and it'll come be to cute. You. Yeah, it'll be cute. So what's the name for your card? Uh, Spency. Spency. Okay, so one of these cards is Spency. We're going to see if we can get Spency to come to the top of the deck. On the count of three, say Spency. One, two, three. Spency. Snap so my I fingers. Should I say it all sensual like that? And is that him? <laughs> yeah, that's Spency. Seven of clubs, Spency. Or them, that's them. Them. Oh, good. Okay, gender neutral. Doesn't have to be a guy or a girl. Okay, uh, what I'm going to do is actually, if you could take the card. You could take the card. And here, put, put it back anywhere you like. Okay. Great, right back there. Let's see, let's say Spency, I missed you. And this time you can say it as sexual as you want. Spency, I missed you. Nice. And Spency jumps to the <gasps> top of the deck. But here we can see if Spency can come to the top even faster. I'll put Spency right on the bottom, pile all the other cards on top, and he jumps to the top of the deck. Ooh. Ooh, Spency is very uh, fast. Yeah, okay. Okay, now, so since Spency is in the top of the deck right here, um, I can actually take Spency. Ooh. And see, he's right there. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to check him out. I'm going to show the audience, Spency. Can you guys see him? Okay. And uh, where do we think we should put him? Here? Here? Um, there. Okay, yeah. cool. Could you push him in? Cool. Mm hmm. Alright. It's on top. No, 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 no. Hey! Whoosh, and then he does 500 backflips and does a bow. Everybody, Sp Spency? Spency. Spency, the seven of clubs. <laughs> yes, yes, that was amazing. Thank you for being the eyes and ears and fingers of the audience. I'm stumped, so. Yes. Uh, well, thank you guys so much for watching this magic show. I had a really wonderful time. I just wanted to let you guys in on a little magical secret, something I like to share, and I'll share it with you too. Okay. Um, I'm a little worried they might not be able to see those, so I'm going to do okay. it over here. Okay, so just so you guys know, 
you might know this already actually, every single piece of paper has a front side and a back side. A front side and a back side. Okay, you probably knew that already, but if you're a magician, there's actually a third magical side that you can make appear if you use a little bit of magic. And that side has a special message on it. I just wanted to say, oh, it's a backwards message. <laughs> thank you for donating to Club Closed and thank you Club Closed so much for having me. You guys are awesome and this has been super fun. Thank you so much, Clay. Yay. Yay, thank you.